So I've been on YouTube for just about a year now and I have learned so much about this platform, about video editing, about filming myself, about talking to the camera. And I wanted to take the time today in this video to share everything that I've learned with you so that if you're starting your own channel, if you're thinking about starting a channel, this can be a super valuable resource for you. Let's just dive straight into the tips from the top. Let's go. I don't want to waste any time with a lengthy intro. I just want to provide the value that you guys clicked on this video for. So for the first tip, you're probably thinking, how do I film myself? What camera do I buy? Do I film with my phone? What kind of lighting do I need? And I just wanted to let you guys know that you shouldn't should absolutely not buy a really expensive camera right off the bat if you don't know that YouTube is for you. For the first 20 or so videos I made, I was actually filming on my iPhone 11. It has a pretty solid back camera and pretty nice front camera too actually, and that's what I used for the bulk of my videos. I didn't even have a nice microphone. Uh, the third video that I actually made using my iPhone is the most popular video on my channel. It's over 7,000 views. So if you're thinking, do I need a fancy mic? Do I need a fancy camera to get views on YouTube? The answer to that question is no. You need to deliver value and you need to answer questions that people in your niche are searching for. The absolute most important thing to do when you are first getting started on YouTube is to like optimize your content for search 100%. I have been following this strategy for ages, delivering value, answering questions, trying to rank in search. That third video that I made uh, talking about non-toxic oil painting, which I will link above right here, has over 7,000 views. It's the most popular video on my channel. It's gained me over 100 subscribers. It was picked up by Browse Features and then dropped, which we will talk about later when I dive into the analytics to show you guys how my analytics look like. But back to the topic of video quality and audio quality. Like I said, you don't need a fancy camera to get started, but you do want good audio. People will tolerate bad video if you have decent audio. They will deal with not being able to see you well as long as they can hear you well. But if they can't hear you well, if your message isn't coming across to your audience, they're gonna click off the video. That's pretty, pretty standard, right? Like you notice yourself doing that when a creator has bad audio. But if you are going to use your phone, which again, I do recommend when you're first starting out, you need to make sure that you are filming in good lighting. I'm filming right now around 5 p.m. in Alaska. This is pretty good daylight right now. I have a studio light right here on this side. I have a light back there. I have two lights in front, um, just like overhead lights that I'm so far away that they're sort of acting as little key lights. And then I have a little bit of a spotlight light that is actually hidden by these flowers over here that you can't see. And then of course the window, and then I also have a window here. Lots of light in this situation right now. Do not film at night with your phone, especially if it's an iPhone, just trust me on this, okay? And to prove this to you, I'll show you some stills from videos that I filmed at night with my iPhone before I got this fancy camera, which is a Canon M50, pretty standard actually. And as you can see, it's grainy, it's gross, frankly. The colors look awful, the lighting is, don't even, don't even, <laughs> don't even talk to me about the lighting. Okay, that, that looks truly atrocious. The uh, windows are straight up black. I filmed these in the dead of winter here in Alaska and it gets very dark very fast here. Yeah, not good lighting situations for video, especially because the iPhone 11 doesn't really have that great low light performance when it comes to video, at least compared to the Canon M50. And the Canon M50 doesn't even have that great low light performance, but you definitely do notice a difference. If you're going to use your phone to film the majority of your videos, invest in lighting, okay? Just do it. The studio lights that I'm using right now are really cheap, uh, but I got them for, I think, 70 bucks on Amazon instead of two lights. I'm only using one right now, and it's really bright. If I tilted that more towards me, it would be blinding. I would be overexposed. I would recommend just studio lights more generally. If you really want to splurge, get a Godox or something, one of those like more fancier lights that have stronger outputs that are like RGB controlled and everything. But if you have lamps lying around the house and they have lampshades on them or, or diffusers this is probably great as well you don't need to splurge to get started and for tip number two this is sort of related to making your life easier lowering the barrier to creating content having a nice camera and mic isn't like necessary to get started for example i'm using the canon m50 and the rode video mic pro i think like the mid-tier one and I also have a moment 20% diffusion filter on the camera right now that just sort of makes the image a little bit softer. And 
that's not necessary, okay? Like, I could still be filming on my phone right now. It would probably look, like, you know, passable, but, like, not probably not great. But it makes me excited to film. It reduces all of the frustrations that I previously had when I was filming at night with my phone. Even when I was filming during the day, I would often get really frustrated with the colors that would be coming out of my iPhone. Lowering that barrier, making my life easier, has made a world of difference in terms of my consistency. As I said, I'm excited to film now, and that paves the way for me to be far more consistent on YouTube, which is like the key to growth. If YouTube is a lottery, they need to make lots and lots of videos to enter into that lottery. That increases your chances of winning the algorithm of having in of having a solid video that YouTube will eventually promote. The most important thing to grow on YouTube is showing up. You need to show up every single week, twice a week if you can. That's something that I'm slowly and slowly trying to inch towards, but I might actually just stick to once a week. You need to put in those hours filming and editing and, and composing your shot and getting all the lighting just right, and you'll eventually get better. You'll get really good at that, and that's what you need to do, and that's what consistency forces you to do. So in order to be consistent, you should make it easy for yourself. Block off time in your week to get it done. Script your videos in advance. Figure out what makes life easier for you. I tend to not write like word by word scripts for my videos, but I do have my computer off the side right now with a Notion document up that just has some notes that I will probably cover in this video, just like topics that I want to hit. And I also record my videos sometimes two or three times to make sure that I have lots and lots of footage. I, re I adjust my glasses, you see what I did there? I, I adjusted my glasses, I do that all the time. It's so hard to break that habit for me and my glasses actually do like slide down my face a little bit and I can tell and I'm always really nervous about that happening on camera and so I just adjust them. It's like subconscious and I see myself doing it when I look into the camera but I just can't stop it. Having multiple and multiple takes to edit that out if I notice it's getting really excessive makes my life so much easier. And it also, see, I did it again, limits the amount of time that I actually have to re-record things. Doing it all at once, blocking off like an hour and a half out of my day to getting this done means that I don't have to worry about, see, I did it again, <laughs> wearing this same outfit a few days from now when I'm editing the video, getting the lighting just right, trying to make the shot look perfect, and I can just eliminate all of that stress by doing it right now as I record the video. And the third tip that I have for you guys is to dive into your analytics. YouTube is really, really great and then it provides you loads of information about how your videos perform and what your audience likes and doesn't like. That is a wealth of information. If you post to Instagram, for example, you've probably noticed that Instagram Reels don't have analytics right now at the time of posting this video. That is endlessly frustrating for a lot of creators, uh, but YouTube has like pages and pages of information. You can export your YouTube analytics to like Excel and do even more data work. Uh, Roberto Blake, for example, does this all the time in his YouTube tips videos when he talks about looking at your analytics really thoroughly. He's very data-driven as a creator. And when I look at my analytics, I notice that my audience doesn't really like long intros. They don't like long-winded periods of three minutes at a time where I'm talking about the drawing before I actually get into the drawing. So I've cut out intros for the most part in my videos. I've tried to eliminate them as much as I can. I am a pretty long-winded person, so I do tend to talk a lot in my videos, but I am trying slowly but surely to eliminate that habit. All right, and for this next part, I actually want to dive into my analytics itself. So we're going to jump into a screen recording so I can show you guys all of the things that I've learned and talking about traffic sources and what to do when your videos actually go viral and get really popular. All right, we are in my analytics now. And as you can see, I just recently posted a video uh, dealing with artistic burnout. I will link that up if you guys are interested in watching that if you haven't already seen it. Uh, but let's look at my analytics. So as you can see, I have 532 subscribers right now. Uh, in the last 28 days, I've gained 2,000 views and about 150 watch hours. So diving into the analytics, I mentioned earlier that I had a really, really popular video that was actually my third YouTube video ever. So let's look at that video in detail and I'll tell you a little more about it. All right, so my most popular video at the moment is my guide to non-toxic oil painting. Uh, it's gotten about 7,500 videos since it was published. And I actually don't, don't really like this graph. Let's uh, look at it since uploaded. So you can see how the video, how the views, so you can see how the views have waxed and waned. They really started picking up 
like right around October, really took off in December and have remained pretty consistent since about February, but they really peaked during this period. Um, and you'll notice I talked about earlier that a lot of my content is very search driven. I'm constantly thinking about how I can rank well in search. Uh, this video was specifically aimed toward that goal. I was trying to get this video to rank really high in search. And if you look on YouTube for the guide to non-toxic oil painting, non-toxic oil painting, can I spell? Maybe I can't. My video is number one. Uh, and it's number one if I go into an incognito tab, whatever, you can look at it yourself right now if you want. It's probably still number one. And just below that, I have a few a few videos below that. I also have another one of my videos, uh, the difference between water mix split and traditional oil painting, which has the same tags as that original one. So I made a sequel to a video that did really well. That is a strategy that I really recommend for you. If you have a video that succeeds, piggyback off that success, make a sequel video, not the same video, but make a video on a similar topic so that your video, your second video will also rank well in search for that same search term. So diving back into the analytics, as you can see, it really took off in December, like right around December 4th and then completely dropped around February 13th. So what was the deal with that? And if you look, you'll notice if I look into traffic source right here, that while like my search results have continued to be really strong, it was the browse features down here that completely tanked the video. Um, and for whatever reason, browse features really picked that up and then completely dropped it a few months later. I have no idea why that was the case. I have really thought about it. I've looked into the watch time and the click-through rate, and I can't figure out why YouTube browse features dropped that video, but for whatever reason, it did, and that video has never been as popular since. And that's sort of related to my next point. If you have a video that goes viral, that's more popular than your other videos, uh, but you don't want your channel to be all about that topic, I don't want my channel to be all about non-toxic oil painting. That's a really, really specific niche that, frankly, I'm not all that interested in. Yes, I like non-toxic oil painting, I like oil painting safety, but that's really limiting in terms of topics. I cover oil painting a lot on this channel, I cover art a lot on this channel, and I'm a multifaceted person who likes a lot of stuff related to art. And just talking about non-toxic oil painting would be kind of stifling for me as a creator. And at its core, your channel should be about whatever you want it to be about. Obviously, if you wanna grow, you should have a niche, you should have certain topics that people can expect you to create. You shouldn't like completely, you shouldn't make like, a Minecraft video one day and then like a what I eat in a week of my life like the next day that'd be really random and probably nobody would watch that if you don't have already a really strong existing audience that loves you for you and once you become really popular on the platform you can branch out you can start creating new stuff but you need to build that audience in order to do that and to build that audience you need to niche down. You need to start talking about topics that people are interested in. You need to build like a solid reputation as a person that's knowledgeable in that topic. And you need to train YouTube to consider you an expert in that topic so you rank and search. So your videos are pushed out to people who are also interested in that. Your channel is your own and you should be able to talk about whatever you wanna talk about on it. Don't feel like you're boxed in if one video really takes off, but you actually don't really wanna talk about that very much. That being said though, YouTube analytics have a lot to learn from and if you guys want more like analytics geared videos in the future, I can for sure show that to you. I just wanted to make a few brief points about analytics specifically. The really nice thing about about diving into YouTube analytics on a regular basis is that you'll learn like real actionable tips that like YouTube YouTubers can't tell you, you know? You can watch like hundreds of hours of Katherine Manning or Roberto Blake videos uh, or Think Media videos, but you're only going to learn a certain amount of stuff because they're not like you. They don't have access to all of the information about your specific channel that you have. Learning how to look at your analytics and actually like learn from them, you take that information and change your behavior accordingly will grow you so much faster than watching those random YouTube videos and like 
have hash would be implementing their tips. And the fourth tip that I have for you guys today is all about patience. If you look at that video that I just showed you in the analytics, that non-toxic oil PG video, you'll notice that video is posted in July and it really didn't start to pick up until like October or December. That is months of it being on my channel and just staying stagnant, not really growing very much at all. But for whatever reason, it took off. It started to perform really well in search. Browse features eventually picked it up. It's continuing to perform really well for me. And I made a sequel video to that video. That video also performed really well. It's I think my number two video. Uh, and I know that if I made a third video on that topic, I would also do really well. But the important thing to note here is that it took months to grow, like absolutely months to grow. Uh, and that's a really important lesson that you need to learn about YouTube. It takes patience. If you really, really sincerely want to make YouTube a part of your career, you need to be enormously persistent. You need to be able to make videos consistently every single week for years and not really see any results. One of my favorite YouTubers on the platform is Katherine Manning. Katherine Manning is one of the YouTubers that talks about YouTube all the time. She's a YouTube tips kind of YouTuber and she's really down to earth and inspiring and incredibly transparent. For her first year on YouTube, she only gained 300 subscribers. She made YouTube videos every single week, sometimes even twice a week, for years, hundreds of videos, until she actually grew and became viral on the platform and now is sitting pretty at 400K. She followed all of those tips that I just shared with you. She listened to her analytics. She listened to her audience. She constantly tried to level up her content. And most importantly, she was persistent. If you are just starting out on YouTube, if you are thinking about trying a YouTube channel, just know that I am with you. I fully support you, uh, but it takes time. It takes a lot of time and you need to be willing to stick with it for ages and ages and not see any results. Uh, I have completed a full year of YouTube by the time that you'll see this video anyway, and um, I've only gained like a little over 500 subscribers. I'm better than Katherine Manning was uh, during this same period in terms of that one metric, uh, but I know that if I want to make YouTube a part of my career, which I do, if I want to make money eventually from my content and my artwork, I know that it takes time. And you need to be willing to put in all of that effort, make as many videos as it takes, follow all of the strategies, constantly level up your content, constantly try to be better and better and better before you make it. And that's all I have to share with you guys today. I wish you nothing but the best in the future. I know that if you try hard enough, you can absolutely make it. Uh, and if you just started on YouTube, if you just made your small channel, comment down below what your channel name is. I would absolutely love to check you out. And I'm sure that everyone else in the comments would love to support you as well. Uh, so yeah, let me know if you have any questions about starting out on YouTube and I will see you in the next one. Bye guys.